shouldn't have given him a yeah, glass. Yeah, open the, the message. Place, but, oh, yeah. No, you should not have given it to a bulk piece last time. I'm not the one who did it! Somebody I else! Did. It was me. Gorm crawls into the basement. Alright then. Curiosity. What was all the fuss about? It looks like it's from Chris. It says, I forgot to mention, if this is going to work, the bar needs to resume running. This means I need you to allow customers back through. Now, either you or my people can run it. Up to you, but clearly a new bartender is needed and maybe some wait staff. If you're going to run things yourself, put a red cloth outside the door. I'll make sure Boo still runs through. If you want me to leave the door empty. I don't think that Chris knows the difference between the word two and the word two with two O's. Fair, if you want fair, me fair. to, with one O, run the bar, leave the door empty. Sure, I'll get Chris doesn't know how grammar works. <laughs> Is Vinda down here? Nope, she's in the necklace. Technically you didn't have to mention that. You, could, you were the only one that was going to see that. You could have kept that here. I was reading it in character. Technically... Vinda is down here, but she's in the necklace, so... Right, okay, so... We should just have nobody yeah, around. And, that and way we don't have she, any Unless she's been people. woken up by the shenanigans, she's still asleep. Right, so... Somebody find a red cloth. Somebody wake up Vinda so that she can open the portal again so I can go talk to Novi. And then, curiosity, you have a thing to go to, right? You should just go do that. Yes. Right. And everybody else who's drunk and made poor life decisions should stop throwing things or I'm going to stab someone in the face. Gorm's already, joking. like, crawled halfway down the stairs. Yeah, I said this very yeah. loudly. Daphne, I don't think Daphne he's Daphne listening. Gets from, Daphne gets up from the bar stool. She walks past you, Harmony. She looks up and she puts her hand out and you think she's trying maybe to pat you on the shoulder but she clearly can't really tell where the shoulder is. So she just hits her stomach and said, and she goes, I apologize, Intensity. I didn't mean to actually try to hit you. I just wanted you to stop. It's yeah, you do realize that the hammer is a war hammer, and it's actually a lethal weapon, and it was kind of like right next no, to my head, so... I, I, I'm thinking about that now. It was a poor decision. And it, to me, it just feels like, like, like a duel... I don't even think about it anymore, to be honest. I I, I apologize. Just, I know I'm not a morning person. She and Bramble looks around and goes and thinks, "Who's intensity?" <laughs> she picks up the hammer. She doesn't even like pick it up and put it. She just drags it. You hear the scraping sound of metal on wood as she drags it back to the bar, and then she recollapses onto the bar. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, it's like before dawn, right? I, it's at dawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's before. Yeah. All right. So yes, I would appreciate someone waking up the Vinda so we can open the portal so we can talk to Novi so that she can run the bar and somebody else can find a red cloth. So I have a question: If you shake the amulet, does her room inside shake? Mm, no. What if you Movement shake it really, really hard? If it's. it's it would, if that was the case, then he just every time he was walking, Fido would be in the room. Climbing. Oh, I don't mean that hard. I mean, I mean like, like really, really hard. It's bad. It's a magically contained portal. Well, if a little bit of moderate shaking didn't shake it, how would shaking it harder than shake it? There's like a stabilizer, but it can only stabilize oh, some magical. Threshold. Exactly. Yeah, it's, the, I mean, it's, really, it's more like, like a dimension. That, like, dimension. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's more like an, a different dimension. dimension. Nope, it sure. is just a shrunken space inside the jet. It, there's, there's turbulence. Oh, it did, yeah. I mean, the TARDIS is like a different dimensional stuff inside, but it still shakes when people shoot laser beams I mean, and stuff. I came yeah. up with this device. I didn't actually know how it functions. You guys are just blowing my mind. <laughs> it's an alternate dimension magic. 
Magic wavy hand okay, wavy stuff. Okay, just the portal to a different dimension. Yes. Magic hand wavy stuff. Alright, so Curiosity, you're going, you're flying off. Uh, Vinda is being awoken. Vinda. Well, hi. Right. Morning. Uh -huh. Vinda, wake up. Uh. We need you for a moment. How, how long did you even let me sleep here? What? For as long as I've got sleep. It's been an early yeah. morning. I'm sorry, dear. <clears throat> it better be breakfast. There will be. Half a strip Make of bacon. Half <laughs> yeah, when, when is he? When is breakfast? Uh, breakfast will be out in just a few moments, dear. Uh, mm. Harmony has a question of you. Uh, what well, now? <laughs> and she comes out. Can you can you uh, can you open the portal? Well, uh, I'm not fully awake yet. What? I better portal. Get... The thing that is downstairs that goes to Zagata. Can you, can you, you reopen? What? It? What? 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 Why do you? Okay. Okay. Fine. Whatever. Will Did the fairy get breakfast. into the drink too? Six hours he is sleep. Tired. Six hours sleep will do this to you. Uh huh. Mm hmm. That and some people are not morning people, and they wake up about like that even after ten hours sleep. Uh, so as we're going past Gorm downstairs, I'm assuming he did that to get away from sounds, and so I am, I am, I am, I am stepping very loudly down the stairs. <laughs> um, my spear might be hanging down such that every time I take oh, a step, <laughs> the, 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 the bottom of the, the of the spear hits the stair behind me <laughs> as I take steps. Clay, Clay, yeah, and when, when, once once realizes what you're doing, she starts snickering. Gorm just grabs whatever any random whatever the closest object he can handle is and throws it at you on a stair. Yeah, that's an object on the stairs. I'm not feeling an object on the stairs. Uh, there is an uh, well. He thinks it's an object. Well, I, I right? shouldn't be on the stairs. I should be down in the basement by now, in some corner, that's, trying to sleep. That's true. You're down. The, you're down in the basement. That is true, he was in the basement. But you can still hear the echoing of the clanging as he hits every stair as he goes down. Um, yeah, okay. So, Binda, you go downstairs, you open the fairy portal? Yep. Okay. Uh, we will pause on that and we'll go to Curiosity instead. So, you fly. You're flying to the Cathedral of Tears? You're muted. You're Kyra. muted. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like he flew away. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Hello? I'm muting myself. I'm just for it exploded. Well, I guess. Fly away. Well, you actually hit the right are. button. I thought sure. you were. I've done me before, where like I press unmute and then the Discord just goes completely gray. It just just like instead of just unmuting, it just goes gray. Thank you, Discord. And, whoops. You shall not speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm going to fly there. Okay. Why would I walk all the way there? That would take me like ten times longer. Three times longer. Three times so. I can fly way faster than I can walk, and I can fly so straight. Can go diagonals. Yes, you can fly. Yes, and it's like literally on the ocean, and we're already like on the floating market area. All right, so you you fly down to the cathedral, and once again you are greeted by the uh, the the, the um, beautiful garden, the long bridge, the water-covered dome, 
you re-enter the, the glass doors, um, and, um, and you, uh, you are, uh, almost immediately as you enter through, uh, you are greeted by, uh, Sarai. She, she gives you a little bow. Welcome back, Curiosity. Good morning. Good morning. I'm pleased to see you here. I have spoken to the priestess, and she would be pleased to see you. That is excellent news. Please follow me. She leads you down the glass hall. Is it just me, or do you hear that creepy music, too? <laughs> oh, I think that that's, I think that's our flute players. I'll, I'll ask him as he, as I go by to make play something a little bit nicer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> I guess it just reminds me too much of crawling around in the creepy caves where there were giant scorpions and yeah. undead skeleton things and creepy. Okay, never mind. Let's just talk to the first. <laughs> Did this to you? <laughs> <laughs> work it? The, the 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 cathedral orchestra just started up. <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> we got there right before their main like breaking of dawn, waking everybody up. Song began. morning song begins playing as you see it slowly, slowly they use it to rise up and awaken the other members of the church ah this is a much nicer song yes this is more of our normal tone I think that the orchestra was just trying something new for funerals anyway this way <laughs> she lifts you as the candles and the pews and into sort of a um, couple of steps up past the pulpit, and there's a back sort of room. She leads you down in there, and once again, you, you, you're at, there's very little um, uh, substance other than glass uh, supporting the walls. There's like little bits of sandstone pillars here and there, but most of it is glass. Um, but you do notice that the further in you go, the more opaque the glass becomes until it's, you cannot see through it, just the light will shine through. Um, you get the feeling that maybe that's it's on for like privacy feelings reasons, to give it a little bit more of like a, like a wall sensation. Eventually you get to the uh, back area, and there's a, a beautiful stained glass uh, door, which has... Um, the uh, Aquilean guardian symbol and a picture of Ayana uh, standing. Uh, she, she seems to be standing in front of a waterway. Her body is uh, half covered in fish scales and half human in appearance. And there's a uh, vortex of water beginning to swirl around her, starting from the, the bottom. Um, as she it's it's all in the beautiful stained glass colors um, design, and there's a little bit of light that streams through it on into the hallway. And you you see um, Sarai gently, and you hear there's no sound, and then a moment later you hear a yes, and Sarai replies. Uh, the young man that visited last night is here to see you. Ah, bring him in. And Sarai nods at you and she opens the doorway. 
and she gestures for you to, to walk into the into the room. I walk into the room. You walk into a very simplistic half domed building. That there are small water fountains on the walls that kind of stream gentle water as a cooling uh, uh, cooling sort of creek like sound um, flows from, from the walls. You see um, green plants littered about the room. Uh, you see a bed again made of glass, um, but with um, with a mattress and some comfortable things. It's like she's sleeping on the glass. Uh, her, da- her desk is also made of glass, and there's papers, and there's pens, and there's all kinds of things. But beyond that, there's not much else. You don't see any sort of decor or lots of clothing or you know, really what looks like maybe it could be a wardrobe. Um, most of it, it's just very simplistic in design. But you see sitting at the desk um, the great, great furred, older looking cat folk woman who's dressed in um, sort of um, pale sky blue robes um, that are that fit well, but seem to have like a silk sort of texture. And she, she uh, turns to you and smiles, and her smile looks kind of wide and toothy, and it kind of, kind of reminds you of a Rafi. It sort of gives you a fake smile. It's a little disturbing seeing it full person sized, but she seems friendly enough. Good morning, priestess. Thank you for meeting with me. Of course, of course. I am pleased to always meet new people from all over. As long as they share in our uh, magic, I am always pleased in teaching youngsters more. I am Kaas. I am Curiosity Zeta Taste. So I have been told. What? And you are a uh, member of the Cat Folk? I am, I am, going all the way from Astora myself to mm-hmm. come here. I prefer the more simple life with fewer distractions. Yes, the temple life here seems very peaceful. It seems very nice here. It has not always been that way, but it has been my duty, I believe, to make it so. Well, I would love to stay at the she temple. She gestures to a, she gestures, uh, to a chair, a, a glass chair opposite of her. Oh, sit down. I'm sure that I would. there's a lot of stuff that I could learn here, but unfortunately my time is limited. Maybe if we stay in the city longer, I can make another visit. Uh, but I guess I have three things, that uh, favors I was hoping to ask of you. And if there's anything that I could do for you in return, that would... That would be good. I well, I see that you have come prepared. Just one moment, and she goes over to her desk and she picks up what looks to be like a notepad and <laughs> pencil, and she begins writing. She holds up your finger for a moment. All right, you may ask as you will. My memory is not so good, so I often write down everything now. But you may continue. Uh, well, the first thing is that on our travels, uh, we found this staff. And I pull out my staff from on my back. And I say, it seems to have some healing uh, magical properties. And if you hold it, it sort of just gives a sense of that it, of what it can do. And I was just wondering if, if anybody here could inspect it or maybe tell me more about it. Uh, but if not, that's fine too. I don't know. Would you like to hold it and say what I mean? It's sort of interesting. She puts the pad and the pencil down and she takes it from you. Indeed. Very interesting. Why you are attached to it. Pull up my notes. I need to remember exactly what. What arrow 
much about it. <laughs> it's interesting. It's literally just a stat block. <laughs> <laughs> could be. I just want to make sure before I add any details in your life. That's not in my notes. <laughs> I didn't even realize it had a damage, it had a plus three on its damage. I never even added it as an attack <laughs> weapon in my inventory. <laughs> you gotta read the whole thing, man. It's got stuff. It's got cool stuff. Is that? What is what? What Kyler has. Can't hear You're you muted. Down. It is. Uh, it is essentially a a floating <laughs> jellyfish with a mouth, like a derpy mouth and ice docks. It's called a flumph. A and it's flumph. great. A flumph. It looks like a yeah. giant amoeba with I stocks. It. Uh, how dare you, sir? It's more like a jellyfish that can float. A flume. All jellyfish can float. And and they feed on psionic energy, and so they're peaceful. But they live a lot of times near mind flares. So, so that's great. Oh, they're so adorable! And it's like, oh wait, hang on a second. We're gonna get a die. <laughs> She's holding the. Now that I remember what it looks like and what it does, she's holding the, the golden star with the red jewel at the top. Um, she she rubs her her fingers up and down a couple of times. And she, at one point, she twirls her finger around one of the chains with the red dot, and she looks at that. She brings the red jewels closer to her eye. significant like this in this area. I am not certain as to where this came from or to whose journey belong. What exactly are you looking for? Um, more information about it? Oh, nothing in particular. I just figured that since healing magic was under the realm of Ayana, that maybe as a priestess you might know more about it. But if you don't, that's okay. It seems to be serving me quite well enough. Up. I'm someone who needs to use weapons like this. If you 
is not one of the damaging or to be damaged by all our defense and the use of restoration. It is an excellent weapon for a young priest. She hands it back to you. Thank you. Well, then, secondly, I was wondering if if there were any uh, instructors or practitioners of healing or water arcana that maybe uh, if we're if I'm staying for longer would be for, would be willing to teach me some you know like techniques of this of this area. I learned all of my water arcana uh, from the Ebony Water Tribe, and I learned my healing arcana from the Dragonborn in their. Uh, Floating city that I don't remember what it's called at the moment. <laughs> but if if we could exchange techniques, maybe we could learn from each other about the different ways that different people do water or healing magic. Well, that makes sense to me. If you desire more training, that that is, you are in the right place for that. Do you mind? What about pairing you with Sarai? She is young, but she has a good amount of experience, and she has never taken on a student of her own. It would be a good learning experience for both of you. Oh, it's just she practice healing arcana as well. She mentioned that she had water arcana skills, but she didn't mention anything about healing. To be honest, I don't really remember exactly what her skills are. But she does have a little bit of healing, I believe. Uh, maybe she was just being before. modest before. That is possible. Sarai usually downplays exactly what it is she can do. She thinks she prefers being in the corner, unseen, which is why she's never had me this. But I think it would be a good experience for her. You seem like you would be, well, to put it in a nice way. An extroverted soul. <laughs> Thank you. And then lastly, uh, don't write this part down on your notepad, um, but you know how you're a fan of, uh, you said, of simple things and simple living? So I was hoping uh, that you could just tell me simply and straightforwardly, uh, without any politics and just looking for the good of everybody, what the deal is uh, with the seer, and um, if anything strange is happening, and how we can get to the bottom of it and solve any problems there might be. <laughs> you cut out it there. Uh, well, that's the I like how much Kyla approves of the way you delivered that. It's like, it's good. Uh, she, it, she looks at you, and you see a large toothy grin come across your face, and, and there's a, you would, being a cat owner, you almost swear she's purring right now instead of laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, she sits up a little bit straighter, and she looks up, and tries to compose herself before she speaks again. I'm not really sure what that had to do with simple living. The question you have asked is not very simple. But the deal is that the seer is very gifted in magic outside of my realm. And I don't fully know why she has been given these gifts. But it does seem like it has made an unfortunate tear in our people and in their well, spiritual lives. And physical for some. I guess I'm not exactly entirely certain what it is you are asking. I have not followed that much about the seer. We have provided aid where we can for the people that are harmed by our gifts. But as far as politics goes, I keep myself out of, well, just about all of them. Ah, uh, well, we were talking with uh, somebody who is telling us that maybe um, 
there is some uh, <laughs> people who might be, you know, like trying to control the seer by influencing who gets these special token things that allows them to see visions. And then there's this thing about the war between the cities and there might be some strangeness going on. And uh, yeah, said person said that maybe uh, the Cathedral of Tears, uh, they might be able to tell us more about some ways in which some something shady was happening and that we could uh, do something about it. Well, it would be helpful to know who it is that is saying these things so that I might go speak to them. But, well, I don't know anything about shadiness. I do know of these tokens you speak of. They do or have been tearing apart the city. They do, in fact, um, cause people more trouble than they're worth, in my humble opinion. It seems as though people are giving up large portions of what has made them happy in the past to look for things that may not make them happy in the future. Um, what was the rest of your question? <laughs> well, I guess the question is whether or not someone is purposefully orchestrating the events in order to gain something by these suffering of others, and if there's anything that we can do to stop it. Well, um, there's always people using bad circumstances for their agenda. I don't know directly who is influencing this here. Rumors say that it is her parents, but I don't know that for certain. I would say probably the more direct people would be the readers of the houses, the noble houses. I'm sorry, I can't quite hear what you're saying. There seems to be someone hammering on the walls very rapidly. <laughs> Uh, yes, we are doing remodeling down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you say that I should see? <laughs> she leans in closer. Young lad, it is the royal house <laughs> that are needed to be spoken to. Ah, thank you. I would please if you ever remember who it was that said these things please let me know so that i might speak to them and correct them as they seem to think that i am much more aware of things than i am okay i will do that if or if i, I remember later do not want me to write this down uh because i think i'm pretty sure that whoever was telling us about this said that there may be nefarious forces that didn't want other people looking into this, so we should try to keep it a secret. So, you know, just in case someone's reading your notes... She's evil! She's evil! Kill her now! But she's not evil, why is she evil? How is she evil? Shifting succubus! No. Doubt every woman. <laughs> I have created a monster. It's your own fault. It's your own fault. It is. It is. Well, thank you very much for your time. Is there anything that I could do in exchange for your for the help and time you gave me? Ah, uh, now that you mention it, in fact, there is something I thought. As soon as Shizara told me about you, you could do for us. Now, but we don't really have a hospital. It is this temple. And, well, most of our most gifted healers are not here now. So I thought perhaps, as you are gifted, you could heal as many people as your strength would allow downstairs. No. No, we're going to the labyrinth. You can't do that. Well, how many what people? Would he, what would he do? <laughs> how many people are downstairs in need of healing? I would say no more than thirty. I see. 
How many bandages do you have? I have four. But the healing hands doesn't need bandages. Well, uh, I guess I will go take a look and see what could be done for them. Five hours later. <laughs> Well, I guess we're yes. down our healer. <laughs> also, you will have to forgive me. My builders are giving me death stairs. I should have <laughs> <laughs> Did they look okay. a hole in the wall? <laughs> I mean, all the walls are made of glass, so... The whole doors are made of glass! Wait, so what was the sound of hammering she on glass? <laughs> she, can, she can see the, the, the Kylar glare is going through. It's there. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for your time. No, so it looks as though there may be a building that is uh, part of the building collapsing. And she bows, she bows her head low, opens the door, and... Just imagining her seeing a, an image of Kylar going. The, the, uh, the least yeah. you could do is waste all of your healing magic on these people because all of our healers are just mysteriously vanished. And I don't know. That does seem, seem a bit strange. Fishy. We're pushing her off a balcony. If we I mean, agree, it, it, it is a, a temple She's super, of super that whole uh, <laughs> the guardian sphere. I think she's just, you're just saying that because of her voice. Just voicest. She's super okay, well, I go ask Sarai if she's still away outside. Ah, uh, could you no, direct Sarai's me to- Sarai's in the hallway. Yes. She's just been standing there. Like, also, we do have a history of, uh, cat people not being what they <laughs> seem. <laughs> <laughs> In certain occasions. Only in the Star Wars campaign. Only until. As far as we know. Yeah. Uh, we do have a shape of the. Yeah. And so begins the paranoia. <laughs> no, it's not paranoia if you just kill everybody. <laughs> There's no parent. Like, you'll never find out if you're right or wrong, but you're not scared of anybody. You're just well, like, no, you, you'll probably uh, find out, because uh -huh. I imagine, like, the shape-shifting magic will go away when you kill her successfully. We're just gonna go with that doesn't happen, so then when we kill the innocent people, we can just claim they were the sucky anyway. Yeah, but there's only a way there's only that only we know of. There's only one person, uh, and if you're gonna claim that it was the per succubus, then there's no need to kill anymore of it. Anyways, ask Zerai. You like, think, uh, yes. I heard, the priestess told me that there were many people in the basement or something that require hospital or medical treatment. Maybe we could go down there and see them. She also mentioned that you and I might be able to train with each other to learn more about magic from each other. Do you also practice healing arcana? I see. Well, maybe we can start with the magical healing of those people down there and see what we, what common ground we share. But maybe, okay. So also, I sort of need to get back to the group and do some stuff. So we should go down there and see if there's anyone who needs urgent medical care, and I'll treat them. There's and no then one who's really needs urgent medical care. Most of uh, them are just sick, or injured, or, you know, just basic, sort of run-of-the-mill everyday medical things. It's honestly a miracle that there's only 30 or so down there getting how big the city is. And, and if I wasn't here, down where down are all the healers who would be healing these dozens of people that come here for medical concerns? Missionary work mostly it's just been spread out all over the different places. We've had, well, with the attacks of the caravans, a lot of you have been called out in the middle.
middle of the desert in order to help those people, people that to survive. And then we've also had a few people trying to help with the difficulties in between, in between Oshidale and Sishan. And also, some of them recall uh, inside the Dominion, many of our priests are actually the I see. Well, let's go down there and see what the situation is like. I'll just walk in, and then I'll be like, Good morning, everyone. I hope that the light shines on all of us. Uh, I'm just going to come around and do a, so a little bit of quick healing. Um, and if anybody still needs further medical attention after that, uh, I guess just stay here, and I'll be back later to deal with any of the more serious cases. How does that sound? Good? Okay. Excellent. So Rai just you know, looks uncomfortably between the two you and the people. Most of the people look at you and just like and go back to what they were doing. Okay. Um, do, you have a, do you have somewhere to be urgently? Uh, kind of. Maybe you should just come back when you, when, when, when you can. That was a little rude, if I'm being honest. It seemed like you really have time for us. Well, I think that uh, Harmony would be really angry at me if he knew that I was going to use the mana here, so we're just going to heal the people without, and yep, okay, so then I just start walking, and I just like put my hand on the people's heads, I'm just going to use the healing hands cantrip and see if that heals people or if they have actual sicknesses that require like cure okay. or something else to heal. I'm going to save you some time and just tell you. You're gonna have to expend some resources here. How many magic points do you have? Uh, I have 54. and add 10 to this. Or, you said 54? Mm-hmm. Add 20 to this. <laughs> How much does it cost to cast healing? Or? Four. Alright, 29. Alright, so... 29 is the number. I want you to roll your healing arcana to deduct from 29. Because I know your healing abilities are pretty ridiculous. So go ahead and roll whatever it is you would normally roll for your spells. Okay. Uh, 16. Okay, so you expend 13 magic points. Okay. Hey, it could have been. It 
could have been 29, Harmony. It was really great. Okay, so you... <laughs> you basically just kind of touch the foreheads of the, like, the not very sick. And kind of give them a little bit of healing points here, a little bit there, and, like, get a couple of people on their feet. And you're just kind of going down the line. Everyone's really confused by you, to be honest. They're just seeing this blur of a black angel touching them and going. <laughs> it's a very weird, confusing scene. Like, you do manage to do some good for a couple of people, but there's definitely, like... You've maybe healed like five, five or five or seven people. There's definitely more work for you. If I only healed five people, then like, cause healing hands doesn't cost any ma any magic point. Like, if that's the only healing I'm doing, then it doesn't cost me what magic points. But like, if do? I, uh, it gives them the stunt die plus. My intelligence plus my wisdom and health. Okay. You, so, most of what you're healing is not a, like a health damage thing. Most of it's like a disease poison thing. But you're mostly like you're carrying sicknesses. Now, there's a couple of people that have injuries that you managed to take care of. You could spend more so, of if you wanted to. Well, so, like, how. I was just gonna, like, see if there's like everybody that could be healed in like the first pass and then like if there's five people that I heal that have sickness what about the other 25 like what are the types of injuries that people have that I skip versus the ones it's that I would heal like the ones you skip are like people that are missing limbs just a few of them there's um some other people that look really sick like probably gonna have to use cure disease or whatever a couple of times on them. Um, most of it, most of the ones you skip are just like ones that's gonna take you a while to heal them. Not, it's not, it's less about resources and more about time. So there's only five out of all the 30 people that aren't seriously ill with very serious diseases that take multiple cures to heal them? Seven, but yeah. You get the feeling, okay. as you're doing this and kind of talking to Sarai, you get the feeling that if, if it was easy to fix, people like Sarai could do it. So there's not a whole heck of a lot of people here that are in actual need of a doctor. As far as the Connus doctor qualifies, <laughs> most of the people here, um, most people here are like probably need a, an attending physician healer to take care of them, like spend some time taking care of them, um, versus versus like things that we feel healed with like a quick healing mm -hmm. spell because because that would be more easily cured. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I guess, so, yeah, so then we finish. I'm just going to ask Sarai. So who are the other attendant healers that are managing this situation? Um, well, I guess I would be one. There's a nurse around here somewhere. And um, Cass is also them. Uh, so how long have these people been here exactly? I see. Well, I'll be back later. Um, but I got a rendezvous with everybody else. So, I will see you guys later. Hey, um, I look forward to it. I guess I'm gonna go talk to Kaz and see if she, um, what this nonsense is about me teaching. Not that it would be not, I just, I, I don't like social interactions. Okay. Can I do like a general overall like intuition role or something? Is that a role? I don't know. Some sort of role to see because like I don't. F I feel like everybody is making this sound very suspicious, and I don't know if in game it's actually supposed to be suspicious or what. So can I just like make a role? 
see what is going on here. If I mean, if you're also curiosity. See, I'm really suspicious is not your nature. <laughs> Insight, maybe? Hmm. Uh, you can make perception and the test. I got fourteen plus six stunt point. I'm just gonna use my stun point to use that. That makes me wonder and make another perception test. I guess I guess I'll make it about like trying to see like are there other people around the temple like other people besides Sarai and Kass and how they're acting or something. Yeah, I mean you don't really need to make it roll for that. You've been around. You've been walking around. There are some people, you see some people who don't look like they're in rooms or like they're priests. You know, there are people in the pews who've been praying, there are people talking to other priests. There's some people who've just been enjoying the garden. You know, right? it just seems like there's I mean there's it's just it's just not busy. There's just no no rush to anything. It's a very peaceful, calming DMV sort of place. Yes, some of them are napping in the garden. It's the DMV uh, is very not calming. <laughs> I feel like everybody at the DMV is very upset about being at the DMV because they have to wait. Like, are the people that are sitting there waiting to be healed for a month, like, just chilling out also with turtle energy? Or are they, like, upset that no one is taking care of their amputated arm? <laughs> Really stuck around to ask people that question. Most people just sort of seem like they were, this is life, therefore they're there. But, and no one really seemed that much in pain. If that helps, like no one was really in pain or suffering. They just had an attached limb that seriously probably needed to be tended to. <laughs> seemed like it, I mean, it's like they're being well cared for. It's just not a rush at all by anyone to do anything. It's just a, a very lethargic sort of place. Okay, well I will fly back to the bar. Alright, uh, for that, uh, viewers, just give us like 10 minutes, give or take, and we'll be right back. Give us a chance to stretch our legs and all that jazz, and uh, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 